right, I think we will go ahead and call the meeting to order. It is 5.35. And we have, um, we kept this regular board meeting because we've been trying to work on school goals, uh, Berlin specific board goals for a while. And we're hoping to uh, have some time to work on that as well as you'll see on the agenda the BESU board communication goal, which is um, tasking each of the local boards uh, to report back on what they believe that means, what the community engagement and communication looks like. Uh, we also had left over from last meeting a hiring process question, and uh, Bill's provided some information on that. And the board handbook statement um, that we took a look at last time, and. Um, we're given the homework of coming with some revisions to that this time, if you had any. Um, so, meeting has been called to order. Item 1.1, is there any um, revisions to the agenda? So, one of the things I didn't put on here, Chris, and this is, um, was the approval of the board orders. They may want to add that under there. All right. So that'll be our one, I think, action item yep. tonight. We had also talked about coming back to website as far as if we had numbers yet to look at. What were the num numbers you're referring to, Karen? It was Bill saying knowing about hiring new people, oh, okay. how those numbers were working out. Would you be able to report on that tonight, Bill? Um, I'm ready to report on what we think it might take to, uh, as in hours, I didn't put together a salary okay. projection on the total cost. And that we have the capability within new hires, and so I can talk about that. So, Corinne, if you're okay with this, we can bring that up either if it comes up under the Berlin Board Goals under Community Engagement or under the SU Communication Goals when we talk about website. Any other revisions? Any public comments or correspondence? And then 1.3, just a reminder that our future of our future meetings, we have uh, another meeting in uh, two and a half weeks at the uh, at U32 and SU Carousel meeting. Did so that calendar thing get figured out where it came out saying that it was at 11 to 12:30? It. Uh, Krista was fixing that today. I know it was on her task list. She was on this past week off on vacation, and she was trying to understand why, how that came out at 11. It, it, we had this issue a couple years ago, and it goes to somehow your individual machine links up to the global clock system for all the computers. Yeah, I mean, I looked at mine, and all my settings looked right, because somebody had said to me, are your settings right, Corinne? And I'm like, yeah, my settings are right, and I checked with somebody else, and they had the same problem. So. Mine said the same thing, but I just assumed yeah, so it was she, just a. She's she's trying to get. It. I mean, it's five thirty. It's a I was just. I was just. Yeah. Um, will we have enough Berlin board members at the September twenty sixth meeting? I would like to go to the U thirty two Montpelier soccer game, which is at six o'clock that night. Under so, the light, so. I can, my daughter will be in that too. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> So I think there'll be some pretty important Act 46 discussions happening that night that are very crucial for which direction boards are going. If I can uh, read the tea leaves from last week's meeting and our executive meeting, meeting about next week. You mean at the joint meeting yep. that that will happen? Okay. Make your best decisions. I would never say to overtake the parenting <laughs> duty as someone who pleaded to one of your fellow board members. I was supposed to have a meeting on Friday. I said, I'd like to go watch a soccer game in the country. <laughs> and it takes me two hours to get there. Not two hours, but an hour and a half to get there. So I, I get it. Just want you to realize. And if it were like any other game, yeah, right. <laughs> I'd be totally like fine. I'll do my community service in that. I'll get back to you if I'll be there. I will try to be there. I might not. Do you know how, like, roughly, will we be done by 7? I do not know because the, I just don't know. The executive committee will make a decision. Matt and I have been having discussions. We might need to go really long for the SU meeting. 
that night. Okay. Because, I mean, there's some really crucial dates, things that are coming up. In I, yeah, Christmas I read the article May. in the paper. Well, yeah, that's part of it. That's not all of it. So there's just some, some crucial decisions that need to be made in the next, really within the next month. Because we have a lot in front of us um, with all the, uh, the draft articles and how transition boards can be put in place and where are we going? Where's, where, are the, where are the boards thinking? There's been a question out there about what the direction is. And, um, so should that have been a discussion agenda for night, tonight? Because I don't know that I no, feel like the executive, we... executive committee, I, I'm trying to be cautious about the confidential conversations I have with the full board chair, Matt DeGru, mm -hmm. but at the same time, say the urgency for the meeting. I'm, so, I'm sorry I'm being kind of vague on that. No, I just, I honestly don't have a sense of what direction this board wants to go in. And I know I missed no. a few meetings, so I, right. I might be out of the room, but I really have you no have idea. You haven't missed anything. We haven't really discussed it. Direction. I don't know that we've even talked about it much since the last time Matthew we, came. We haven't. We've all kind of had a... Um, sit back and watch approach for a while now, but it's coming to a time when we need to start talking about it again. Um, I wasn't going to put it onto this agenda. I was thinking about putting it onto the next agenda, but I've been approached to join a lawsuit as, as the chair. Not as the chair. Ask if the Berlin board would want to join an Act 46 lawsuit, and I just haven't dug into it enough yet to be able to bring it to the full board to consider it. But that's something we need to at least consider. I did receive that correspondence. A new one? And I know a year or two ago there was a couple of things. I think I even passed along something to you when I saw something. Yep, it's a, it's, I think it's the same, it maybe the same group. I don't know. It's, know. it's a different group. This group, this is a group, um, this group has not gone as a group before. This is, there have been three lawsuits in the state for Act 46 and they've all been thrown out of court. So who, may I ask, who asked? It's a uh, correspondence was from the Vermont schools. So not the, nobody in the WCSU. No, 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 no. And it's um, it's a it's a group that's doing it on a volunteer basis, and they're saying you could choose to join if you aren't forced to consolidate, then you can drop out of the litigation. But they're just trying to see who might be interested. Um, I don't know that it's quite right for us to make a decision yet, but I wanted to gather a little more information on it and bring it bring it before the board. But I wasn't ready to do that for this meeting. Okay. But you're right, we have to have a conversation about this. All the dates are coming to a head. The executive okay. committee is working. I, I've things. asked the executive committee to tell me, I said, guys, how do you want us to budget right now? Because we're starting budgeting now in the buildings. You know, the SU budget, I'm going to suggest the executive committee is put off another month. So what time does the full board part of this start? Executive 5 30. Okay. The executive committee no longer meets on the same night as oh, the don't. carousel meeting. Okay. We've change it because it just doesn't work. I mean, you've been there before, Vera. Mm -hmm. we, I finally learned, and Matt and Stephen and I all said, let's not do this anymore. Yeah. All right. And we're still planning on local board meetings that night? Yep. After I think there's the going to be, board. he says, probably, I mean, that's something we're going to figure out in the week before with the executive committee. What's the yin and yang? There might be a go back and forth a couple of times. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I could. I wish I, I just don't know. I mean, people look at to me all the time. They're like, "So what are we doing on this?" But I'm like, I don't know. It's a governance question. Negotiations. It's a governance question. I, I don't have an answer. I had to say that to the teachers. I said, I don't know who you'll be negotiating with past November 30th. Knowing our boards, that will support the people that will be here that are here now at the beginning. But I don't know. And do you know anything about? The state board, like taking all the way, they're going to take right up to November 30th. Could they possibly come out? Their last some meeting preliminary? is scheduled. No, their last warned meeting, right now, or scheduled meeting, I should say, is November 28th. So I bet they'll go at least to November 28th. Okay. They also are looking at the 90-day part. That uh, if you read those draft rules and looking up in town meeting is and getting yep. that timing right. Yep. So things can happen in town meeting. Okay. All right, anything else under 1.0, 1.1 .1 to 1.3? We'll move um, on. Could, Go ahead. could I ask one other question? Um, I think I had sent something to you, Bill, to ask 
um, which I guess would kind of fall under communication, but I was a little confused on the school website. It had, when it said, check out this important, I forget how it said it, important letter from the superintendent or something. It's a letter to Washington Central educators, where I was thinking it would be like a copy of the welcome back letter. And so I wasn't really sure if this one to the staff was meant to be there on the website and if the one to the families was going to be posted there. Um, so that letter that I wrote is to the staff. And it's on the front of the website. Yeah. Okay. We can switch that around. So I, I was thinking that it was meant to be one for families, but I wasn't positive. No, I, I never write one to families. The principals do that. Yeah. Where did so, you find that under? On the front page. After it says oh, that miscellaneous. there's some message about the school has been here since 1969, and at the end of that paragraph, and it says, look here, oh, here is capitalized. Message. to the discussion agenda 2.1 Berlin board goals at uh, the last meeting or maybe it was a meeting before I forget we adopted the I think it was the last meeting we adopted the SU board those three broad goals goal one being board governance and operations goal two being monitoring of student learning and goal three being community engagement and those cover a number of things that we um, had in our Berlin specific board goals um, but there was some discussion about there being some um, particular details in those that we might want to maintain as opposed to just discarding those for the, the three big SU board goals. Um, and it's always good to come back to these every once in a while and update them. So these haven't been, I don't know that they've been touched much in the last um, two to three years. Um, I actually don't like the way these are um, laid out. Or, oh, yeah. I don't know. I feel like there's a piece missing there as far as um, the how the board's going to monitor that these are absolutely being yeah. done or revisited or. Yep. I feel like there's a there's a piece missing <laughs> because of that reason they we don't revisit them. Yeah, and it's some of them are very difficult to measure. They're not. What's the acronym? Smart goals. Yeah, they're not measurable. Specific not measurable. measurable. Yeah. Um, some of them are not time. Bound, so you don't really know <laughs> when you've gotten there. Right. Mm -hmm. um, achievable is another one, so are they achievable? Specific, um, measurable, achievable. Let's see what the R is. Rele relevant. 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 Thank you. And timely. And timely. Time bound or timely. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I, I don't have any, any uh, ties to this. It was part of the original drafting of them, but. Um, I'm open to starting from scratch, changing format. Um, and I do want to actually hear from both Bill and Aaron, what's helpful to you if we're, as a school board, trying to kind of set the direction or set the North Star here? Um, what's helpful for you from us? Can I? Sure. Just put in. Yeah, go ahead. I just, I, for us. Us as a board, I don't want to get like stuck in the weeds on wordsmithing and making sure they're absolutely perfect. I, I want to see us spending our time like get our goals done and not drag it out over five meetings and work on a timeline when Bill or central office or Aaron will get back to us, which I think Bill has very much worked on that timeline. Mm -hmm. So I really think it's worth looking at the timeline that you have built for reporting back for like the academic pieces, mm -hmm. um, the, the communication I'm piece looking, kind just of looking to see if falls more. on us. But I feel yeah. there are other pieces that are already built into a timeline. Let's build it from there mm -hmm. and pick out the ones that we feel are the most important and pick out the ones that we know that we can work on. And that's where I feel like some of these that 
it's not work that we have to do. And if we're putting work on somebody else, I want it to be meaningful and something that we're going to get the results back. Mm -hmm. I just asked Aaron if he has any chart paper because it might be easier to list. I mean, I think you guys could say in probably about two minutes mm -hmm. what you what's important to you. You know, and come to agreement on that pretty quickly. You know, and and what does the board? How does the board ensure that? And, and Vera's been in the school quality conversations for a couple of times now, so that I think it's been a really helpful conversation to hear mm -hmm. from colleagues what's important. And then uh, the reason I was just asking Aaron for some chart paper was just to kind of show you uh, some of the key milestones for when data can happen and link it back to the work that we did with Nate this summer, Nate Levinson, and say, so you can see, because there's one of the things that there were good and bad parts of No Child Left Behind Good part, use data to drive your work and set goals. Bad part, some of the misuse of data mm -hmm. and the misuse of assessment. So showing you a quick little timeline that I could draw for you would make it a lot easier to kind of see that and do what you were talking about, Vera. At the same time, like how do we how do we know that? How do we how do we ensure we're doing the monitoring we should do as a as a system? Yeah. That I think you've all heard from me. I really believe that's a really key piece of board. A lot of times, monitoring the operations or little pieces does you kind of lose the forest through the trees in my mind. And it's not just monitoring the the forest either. It's like when do you need to go into a deep dive and when don't you? And I think there's reasons to do that as a board when you know you're not seeing changes or improvement yeah. you want to go. Absolutely. I mean you look back at these and what I think what these really did accomplish was we talked about behavior and disruption in the classroom and I think it was a, a what lot was, was set high off from that. That was what was high on the, the list time. at the time. And it comes up in like every goal. Yep. And, and but I mean that set that helped inform I think you and Carol that that's what we were really concerned about at the time. But there's a as Vera said, there's a lot of stuff in here that's just kind of yeah. I don't know what, thinking out loud, yeah. detail specific that probably wasn't measurable and not real helpful to you all. For me, it's, I think for any, any system, what gets monitored, what gets done, but if you try to monitor too much or too fine a grain level, then usually there's like, well, yep. you can't do all that. So it's, it's that right level, and it's, it's yeah, giving authority and responsibility throughout the system. Mm -hmm. You can't get authority without responsibility. You can't get responsibility without having some authority to maybe have your own input into how that works. So that's a that's one of my big management philosophies. Is you have to get that. And then a colleague of mine said, Bill, you should add the word accountability. So authority, responsibility, and accountability. Like, and that's the checking part that we're talking about in my journey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. The other thing that always comes to mind for me here is we shouldn't be reinventing the wheel. I know all the other schools in the district, all the other. Not all of them. Okay. Some of them have. Some of them have, have already done this work. Well, they've There's done some. Some don't even want board goals. <laughs> right. There are some that don't want them. Yeah. No, yeah, Vera's right. They want no part of it. Hmm. Which is kind of, I mean, I don't know how. you got to get some direction and some. Well, even whether or not you call it a goal of just things that you are well routinely checking in on, yeah. such as the behavioral stuff. I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be us that brings it up, but if we haven't heard anything from Aaron in some time in it, just one of those things that you want to go back to and say, how is that going? I mean, it's the same with, with most of the stuff on there. With communication, I mean, you want to. Even if we have the best goals, best plans, I mean, to me, it's just one of those things you just kind of touch base on every once in a while. So I'm open to suggestion on how we start here. I don't know how we start, but I'm gonna drive, jump, drive, jump right in. Sure. Um, so, two of the ones that I don't feel necessarily uh. fall into the whole full board goals that we had yep. um, was increase academic growth and success. So are you under goal one? Uh, you 
can number it whichever one you want. <laughs> I mean, under the existing I, goals, or you don't want to even start there, you just want to. No, I think she's just. I'm just starting. Yeah. Okay. I guess for me, the, I the goals that okay. we've had SU wide would be one, two, three, and then. Gotcha. This would be a four or some other number. If, yes. Yep. Depending on if we were prioritizing yep. it anyway. So say and that again, Vera, what was it? Increase academic growth and success. Good. Which to me, I'm, I'm leaving it broad for a very specific reason. Why? I don't want to see a pigeonhole into something, but to me that opens it up so it doesn't necessarily have to be in the classroom. It can be in the community. It can be many different things. Okay. Um, and number two, I'm not sure that Bill would agree with me on this, but as a board, um, provide and support professional development for all staff. I would support that. What's that? I would support that. I just, I didn't know if you'd support it as a goal for us, per se, but the, I'm just. I want to know more about it. So this is. Either way. <laughs> and then the last one um, was policy, which well, obviously we're there, so I think to hold us accountable for making sure we get through this process is making sure that the policies are up to date in order. And well, to that one, I would tag on policies and procedures. We had a conversation about that at the last meeting here. Which I missed. <laughs> so I'm saying that to you. I missed, and we didn't have the minutes. We don't have the minutes. No, I, no, just I put took them off the line. Yeah. So. I've got the minutes that I took. Because I, you have your regular scheduled meetings on the 26th. Okay. So your business meetings on the 26th. Kind of so this was not, I didn't put anything on here for business. Okay. All right. So those are the what I have. Good. And you would, I'm assuming from that, that you would say, well, maybe you wouldn't. I this wouldn't because I think I've been told that. We don't get into the minutia of how mm -hmm. it's given the direction of this is what our goals are and how they get there is mm -hmm. not up to us correct not that you don't want input or feedback it's i think it let me put it a different way um i think it's to say if there's something that if we said a how and you said hey the community is going to have a real big problem with that you should know that but when it comes to educational practice, when it says to increase student achievement, I'll just go off of that one. Or support the PD, let's go to that one. Like we wanna make sure as a board that resources are there so all teachers are doing professional development, they need to become the best practitioners they can be. So you're not gonna say, you know, pick this. I, I interpreted it this way and tell me if I'm wrong. We wanna ensure the resources are there, the teachers are doing it. If you need more days, let us know. If you need more resources, let us know. Um, but, you know, which PD is the best one for math instruction? You got a bunch of math experts around there, let them go figure that out. Yes. You know? But or, what you were saying, Vera, was not just teachers, you said staff. Yeah, so that Bill, and Bill include, said all staff when he... Yeah, I said all staff. He, I, I thought you said teachers there. I may have, but... Um, and I'm not, you know, I think for different... Yeah. You know, this goes back, I mean, this is why I think having that grounding and the retreat work, I mean, I think Nate really kind of helped set up those, kind of those lines of delineation too, mm -hmm. of like, hey, board members, you should really be ensuring that these things are happening and then ask your leadership team. And that's part of what we're gonna talk about school quality is we, you wanna see increased learning. So if we're talking about goal two, that's, that's in there, who sets the goal? Who actually sets the SMART goal the way Chris was talking about that says, we're at 50%, we're gonna be at 59%. Who sets that? You know, And who sets the methods to how to get there? And what I heard you say, I wanna see increased, I'm not even telling you how much. You know, who, because there's, like how much growth can you expect to see? And it's different depending on where the performance is at mm -hmm. within a system when you start to look at the student population. And you know, for anyone that's in either of our positions, I would say that you can't get there until you've had a conversation with the teachers when they look at their initial, where the kids are at and how many kids do they think they can move from 
performing at this level to performing at that level. And roll that all up. One of the supervisory full board, whatever we're calling that, um, at the policy meeting we were talking about the community engagement, there was a, a policy that we were looking at and everybody agreed. It's not really what we were all thinking. And so that's an area though where getting some more specifics from each of the boards to find out what we had in mind when we said community engagement, what do we mean by that is yeah. really important oh, because definitely. everybody certainly does seem to have their own spin on what that is. That's where I was kind of going with my question was we do have one goal here that's public engagement. And I heard what you said earlier about that. It's really the board's job to drive that. Is that an appropriate goal for us to set for the school? Or is that a goal for ourselves? I would say that's a goal for us, but that's, um, like I said, that's one out of three of us. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I, because I mean, I, I guess it's kind of a little bit on both, but I really feel like where the school is at and when it comes to budget and the exciting things that are happening, I, I really feel like it's kind of, it kind of falls on us to promote the school and sell the school and to um, to put ourselves out there to answer questions and to be the kind of in between the community and the school. Mm -hmm. I'm not into selling, but I'm into informing. Okay, that's a better <laughs> I'll go with you. I will change my word. I take out that word. Informing is a better word. But yeah, when, when we were discussing it, it, it the, the policy that we were looking at seemed to say, like, you want to reach out to the community and like find out what their expectations were and all where I was like, what I was thinking is that you have this ongoing back and forth, you know, that it isn't just getting out some information before budget time or having the community say whatever and checking back with them in two or three years. You know, what are you thinking now? It's just this very much ongoing in many different avenues of sharing information. Yeah. Which is, Adrian said that's the sense that she got from the U32 board also is, more along the lines of this ongoing communication with the, with the community, both school community and wider community. Just say that I fully support those three that you mentioned. I could get behind those. I don't know about you, Vera. Yeah. And I just wonder if there are any others. The We had um, four categories of goals and have four categories of goals. It was academic and behavioral, fiscal, which has never really made a lot of sense to me. I mean, some of the subcategories in fiscal are good, like we want to have a, a long-range capital plan, we want to have a clear and understandable budget that gets community support, but I'm not sure those are... I don't know that I see the utility in stating those as goals. But, um, the third was school climate. Which I think probably deserves a little bit of discussion, and public engagement was out of the whole. And does that just mean communicating, informing, or is that also, you know, getting people into the school and um, having activities in the school, and maybe having the school itself through the administration that piece of communication and engaging the public too? Did you have some ideas, Claire? Outside of you? Um, well, one of the areas that you just mentioned, Chris, was behavior. And while behavior could stand on its own, you could also think of it as being a piece of the increased academic growth and success, and that behaviors need to be working well not only for individuals to see that growth, but for their classmates Thank to you. see that growth. Yeah. So I could see that being encompassed. I think so too. In that. Um, and I, I think it's really good to have goals be as positive uh -huh. as possible. And just saying behavior out there, I think a lot of people immediately think of poor behavior yeah. um, rather than outstanding mm -hmm. behavior. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, the I agree the the fiscal. I mean that's that's not really a goal. That that's just ongoing. Every year Every we year. deal with budgeting and unforeseen issues that come up that are going to end up needing to be dealt with. I don't see that as being a goal at all. I didn't either. Yeah. Um, yeah and, and to me, are not necessarily saying we feel it needs to be a goal right now, to me doesn't take it off the table totally. It means you can only have so many goals that you're focused on. And it doesn't mean you sh are necessarily going to drop the ball on anything else that should be checked in on a regular basis. But if you have too many goals, you, there's nowhere to focus. Right. So I think just having the supervisory wide goals and having, you know, I don't know, I don't know what number to say. I don't think you can say a number. Keeping it to a minimum is good to not have too much to have it be overwhelming. After all, we only meet so many times a year. So are there any areas in particular or, or, or concepts or um, just things in particular that are important to you, Corinne, to have a goal toward beyond academic success, this professional development that Vera mentioned, and um, the policy governance piece of this? No, because I, to me, the policy is so big. I mean, and we we just now are all getting on the same page, literally, <laughs> mm -hmm. and still need to get the procedure stuff with it. And that's how can you know, how can you have any oversight or comment if you don't know what you're working with? And so, I think this is still going to take some time to get this all where we're all comfortable with what's included in what we have. Good time. Nothing more. As you're looking at this, I'm hoping we can have a better template than this for our next set of four goals when we adopt them. I think so. I think it's going to be rather short, which is what I'm hearing. Yep. Um, and some fairly broad statements that can encompass a lot. I think the whole public engagement piece can go right within the, the goal number three of the board, yeah. supervisory union yep. board goals. Um, trying to think if school climate needs to be addressed in any way or if that's wrapped into any of these other goals. It was kind of a brain dump of what we were thinking at the time and not really a strategic goal setting exercise when we put these down, I think. For me, I think that could come out and it kind of can be taken over by the provide and support professional mm -hmm. development for all staff. Because to me, it kind of falls in that school climate of working together as a team and within your community, within your school, kind of all encompasses in that professional development piece well, for me. Yeah, I was wondering if there's some way we could extend that a add a few words that would show that it's a little oh, yeah. broader than that. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't have a thought about that at this very moment. Yeah. When you get them written down, you'll have more time to react to them. Um, maybe along the lines of provide and support professional development for all staff. that creates a increases that increases student performance. That's what you're going after. If we mm. give support to a custodian or yeah. they're making sure that the the, the facility is better maintained and clean, which is environments in the top ten of things that are true to student learning. Isn't that the outcome you're after? Yes. Kind of an if-then statement. If we provide high quality and professional development. Well, to me, the example you just gave wouldn't just be about custodial staff having it just be about the environmental things and all, but there might be something about 
working with um, students or other people just because they're people that are around all the time in all kinds of different situations. So I would think, I would think you could even, even broaden out what's available to them. Over the years, there's certainly been some that just really stick to themselves and others that you see having conversations. And I mean, some of that's a personality thing, but. Vera, how is goal two from the SU and the increased student learning that you had put, how do those differ? How is the SU one? For the SU learning? is um, develop a more thorough database understanding of student learning and our supervisory union to inform board level strategies, budgets, monitoring, and communication. I guess it doesn't, other than less worry. <laughs> <laughs> so it really sticks out there. So yeah. It really isn't. It, I mean, it, it is encompassed in that. Could you read this, that one again? Develop a more thorough data-based understanding of student learning in our SU to inform board-level strategies, budgets, monitoring, and communication. I guess to me, that one is more about the reporting, who's going to report, what are they going to report, when are they going to report about the student, and this one is more about the first step of increasing the academic growth, and then that one is more about the reporting out piece of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, this I'm not does, disagreeing with you. I'm listening to your this thinking. This does fall into that. Yeah. I, I, and I, I guess for me, this would be, um, I'd want to see the increase in academic growth in all of our students, and that would be the follow-up piece of creating the reporting out, mm -hmm. when it's going to be reported out, which then affects your fiscal piece. And what was the second part that's in that? Uh, board level strategies, budgets, monitoring, and communication. So yeah, the strategies on how to approach, if there is a child that's not meeting, how are we going to? Mm -hmm. Well, what I like when you were first saying that, although you were saying academic growth and success, you were quick to say not only in school but in the community, and it just seemed more of a, it's about the kid, not just how they're doing in math. Right. You know, that it, it the made. The whole child. Yeah. Whereas that, in hearing you read it to me, sounds much more of a what's happening in math and writing and so do you as a board want to be on accountable for everything that's happening in a child's life? No, but I like how this was just kind of open. I mean, Vera was saying she had this open and broad on purpose to be able to look at it. It's not saying that it has to be for each and every student. It's just. Underneath my notes, I had um, growth within and I used an example of Genius Hour. And then I went on to say, students are empowered to explore their own passions and interests in the real world. Of It could be what they take for music lessons outside of school. And no, I'm not, I don't want to put the board in a situation that we are um, trying to uh, control, but to oversee what's happening outside of school, but yet bring it into their everyday learning mm -hmm. in school. So, the, I mean, the reason I'm asking these questions, and no, there's no questions. right one to think about, but I went right, we went back to the, the acronym from SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable, um, relevant. relevant, thank you, I always forget that one, and timely. Mm -hmm. So, the more specific we are, to a, you know, and it's trying to find that. And that's what you've been talking about since the beginning here, Vera, is like, what's the role where we do that? And then where do the administrators and where do the teachers do that? And where do the students do that, frankly? So I think that's it's trying to find all that balance. And for me, the data piece, it's a cycle. So you first place, you're like, where are you at right now? So that's my data. What's that tell you about the kids you're working with? If I'm a teacher, if I'm a principal, what's that tell me about the school? If I'm myself, what's that tell me across the SU? 
where are some strat, you know, where are kids at? How many, let's dig into that data and try to tear, what's that tell us? And what do we think we can do for strategies? Where are the resources we need for those strategies? Implement them. And then we're back to that data step again. So I think it's, it's more, I want to show more like a spiral mm -hmm. of that, you know, as I go around here with my hand, to think about that planning and you have that data informing it. So I think you can come into that data wherever you want to come into it, realizing it's that spiral that you're going to have. Of the first set that you just took might be a learning a, a pre-assessment, and you might have a post-assessment, but that post-assessment might be the pre-assessment for the next step. Did I explain that one? Anything yeah, you want to interject in there? Kind of. And so it, it's. I think there. I think it's all good. I mean, I, I think that I just that's what I wanted to kind of hear from when I asked you, Vera. Was you know what are you envisioning, thinking? Because I like the idea of the increased student learning. I think every board would argue that's what we want to do, and how does that fit in the monitoring? Because one of the questions, one of the conversations, Kari and I had this morning is I said, Kari, I don't. I think the board, and this is one of the things Nate left with, was saying you should ask the leadership team to come back with a goal that they're going to meet. Insisting there is a goal, but not saying what it is, and tell you how it's going to be done to see if that how is going to be okay with the community. Because he gave a real good, um, he told a real life story for himself that he didn't understand the community piece in his job, and that came back and he was trying to go too fast for the community mm -hmm. so it's that figuring that back and that's why that how discussion is um, it's important to have not to govern the exact how but like here's feedback like that ah, you can go try that but that might that work really well or you might want to change some of your messaging on that one or think about something totally different so I, I don't know how to put that all in the goal piece for you right the second sitting here but that would be some of my thinking about that student monitoring and I'm fine either way with it being another goal for Berlin or being interject. I'm just giving you some points to think about. Okay, thank you. So I think I have enough to come up with a rough draft for next meeting for you all to look at. Some brief, broad goals in addition to the three SU board goals. We'll have at least these three from here. If you come up with anything, Corinne, send it, send it my way. I may add one or two myself. And then we'll have something to react to at the next meeting. And we'll get it before the next meeting? I'm just thinking yes. about if Peter, no, I just mean if Peter <laughs> will have a chance. I, don't, I, I, I wasn't going there. I just meant if Peter would see it before, before the next meeting. Yes, for sure. Hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Next up on the agenda is the uh, SU communication goal. So I think we've started to talk about this um, a little bit, but uh, I think what the <clears throat> what we're looking for, our task as a local board, um, is to provide input on the purpose of board level community engagement. So like you said, Corinne, everybody kind of sees this as something different. Is it mm -hmm. communicating out to the community? Is it gathering input from the community? Is it a dialogue? Um, is it some other form of um, bringing people into the school? Um, there's a lot that could go into that. So I think our, our job is to kind of try to put to paper what we consider community engagement to be and what's the purpose of community engagement. We do have our board goals <laughs> for the moment, which had a whole section on um, something called public engagement. And again, it was kind of a flow of thoughts more than a, a purpose or a goal. Um, but it talked about, at the time, we had a lack of community awareness or involvement with the school board. We had limited communication among parents and the community and educators. That students were disconnected from adults in the community. 
that the school culture and climate negatively affected by disengaged is negatively affected by disengaged parents and community. Uh, parents not involved in their child's learning as teaching partners. Community unaware of educational goals. PTA and board do collaborate. That was current state at the time. I think still is somewhat. Um, there were missed opportunities with interested audiences and it will, we might be stifling motivated community members to participate in the school. And as a desired state, we wanted the community informed about school successes and challenges. We wanted volunteerism to be high, well attended school functions, contributions to our budget discussions, contributions to our vision for the school, an open line of communication with the board that parents, teachers, and neighbors are all engaged, that the school board and select board communicate and collaborate, um, and that there's a maximized information flow and transparency within every available method. I think that just kind of helps frame the variety of approaches you can take to this goal. It means a little something different to everybody. Thoughts on the purpose of community engagement or, or what our goal is as a board in engaging the community? Here you mentioned selling or promoting the school mm -hmm. or informing people about what's going on at the school. That's certainly one piece of it. I think it's, um, I think sometimes it's difficult to reach the whole community if people are visiting the website or receiving the newsletter and is the newsletter back to just once a month? Is that it's still up once a month. Okay. Um, if you don't mind, can we, what's our purpose in communicating before we get into the specific ways? Can I ask a question to too to make you think I don't need an answer? What's the difference between school engagement and community engagement? Think about that. Can I give my opinion? You can get, yeah, do whatever you want. You can decide to respond or not. I just, so I, I've given that same question to many boards. School yeah. engagement to me, it means messages are only going out to just the, the school people, the school community. Mm -hmm. Whereas, the public or community to me would be the whole town of Rose. Like whoever's on the checklist or however a whole town piece of mailing would be sent out. Which to me are two very different things. I mean we have 220, 10, 20 families. Whatever, you got it. Versus the, how many, how, how many are on the checklist right now? About 1,900. And where I was going with that is how we communicate and who we communicate with sometimes are going to be very different things. Um, obviously, if let's get signed up for soccer, that's not going to go out to the whole community. That's going to be to the school community. Whereas we're having this Act 46 discussion that's going to affect everybody in our towns, in our surrounding towns, please join us for this discussion would be a whole com town community um, piece to mm -hmm. communicate. But what are, where I was going with that is sometimes how we communicate can be costly to make sure that everybody is getting the information, whether it's our agenda is posted in the newspaper, or you know we have this upcoming Act 46 meeting. Please join us. We want your input. Whatever. Sending out postcards, any of those pieces can be costly. So I think that's where sometimes I struggle with, you know, how to communicate and not have it cost the school and the town more money. I disagree with one of the things you said. The example that you used as far as if it's soccer sign-up sign time that is only for the school, if there are homeschooling families in town, unless they go to the website and find it there and all, there, there could potentially be others that want to know. Or could be somebody like my husband and I, no longer kids in school, but a reminder seeing soccer's happening and they're still looking for coaches, you know you might get somebody that would actually be willing to, to help out. 
if they knew, if they got that reminder. And I think that's been part of the issue with communication in my mind is that there's been a lot of great communication and great stuff going on, but it's been very inconsistent mm -hmm. as far as when it gets out. It's like, okay, so for a couple of things in the last year, we decided that a postcard or a something was going to go out to people on the checklist or you know, however you decide you want to do it, but people might not have heard anything by that means in quite a while, and so it's like, oh, here's a piece of information, you know? Wonder why I haven't heard anything else from them. Um, and, just, and just getting things consistent, so for as much as we need an overarching, you know, why are we communicating and what are we communicating about, to me, it's more of a, a checklist of, you know, these are the ways we want to communicate out and will and, and having there be real clarity as far as who's going to do it. Because we've even stumbled since I've been on the board as far as, well, who's going to put it on to Front Porch Forum? You know, is it coming from one of us? Is it coming from the office? Are we getting it from Bill first? And there can be a whole lot of delays of people waiting on each other. You know, who's writing the message that's going out? To say nothing about who is actually putting it in places. Um, when Chris Dodge was principal, he did a great job of getting photos into the world on a regular basis, you know, which, which is a wonderful thing, but that does take effort from a particular person to make it happen and, you know, meet deadlines if it's a timely thing. If it's not timely, it, you know, you could send it in. It's okay if it happened two weeks ago. And I think something that we really lost when the school newsletter went to being monthly was really making it clear what's coming up. It's a fantastic job of looking at what's been going on for the last month, but the calendar of events that does get pushed out some weekly, I think that's still sketchy as far as who to get in touch with when you see uh, something's coming up, because it used to be in the weekly newsletter, you'd, you'd get a lot of detail with that as far as mm -hmm who's doing it and who do you get in touch with about it and, and so forth. And now it's just this little line of, you know, it, it's happening, but it may not give you enough and you may not grab hold of it and say, okay, I need to figure this out. Can I ask a couple of questions? Just yeah. Somewhat be new. Um, is there a, a community news letter of some kind that includes all municipality stuff? My thing would be the closest thing to it. The town hasn't put out a newsletter in several years. They used to have one that would go out twice a year. And that fell by the wayside because of staffing issues over at the town. Okay. Um, and there, there's been talk about bringing it back, and which that was something that had some advertising on it to help pay for it. Yeah. And um, was sent out paper copies by the town. And so the, what I do, the news to know in the front porch forum, those are really the things that get to the most other people. It, it isn't necessarily, only some of it overlaps in that I know I'm not sending it to a lot of the parents that are here, so it's the school that needs to get the word out to those guys, but I hit a whole lot of other people who don't have kids at the school. So I, I look at um, <clears throat> the, the question that's on the table about you know school families versus the rest of the community. And I guess um, I want to do everything I can to meet whatever the expectation is. If the expectation is that the school needs to get things to everybody in, in the community, um, what are some of the resources? Looking at the, the town website, under community, I mean, you have all the different like departments, if you will. Um, is there expectations for those? You know, you have, you have the library, historical society, fire department. You know, are, are they getting things out to to all families in some way that we could mirror? As you know, um, I know it's different municipalities, if you will, but I'm just trying to think about these seem mostly links to their website. Are we going above and beyond to reach out to families beyond what 
everything else in the community is doing, or, or is there a way that we can all together be part of something where it's getting it onto the doorsteps? It kind of sounds like that's the way to get things what you want out, is to get into the hands of people. And is there a way, you know what I mean? I guess that was my question about the newsletter. Is there, well, you know? One of the things that I've tried to encourage the select board, and it still hasn't happened yet, was to at least get out a mailing to all folks that describes where they can find information, because I think we have a lot of new people, there's all this turnover in town, um, that may not know <coughs> what does exist um, for communications. And there is a page that's in the family handbook, the last one, which was information and events. And that tells some of them as far as the recorded message thing that we update at the town every week, which includes school stuff. If, if we know about it, if it seems like something that community should know. Um, and the front porch forum, and the news to know, and bus stop conversations and the Orca media and just trying to make it clear and having a variety of things because everything doesn't work for everybody, which is why you try to get it out in so many places. So somebody that doesn't have commu computer access, they might like just calling the recorded phone line because most everybody in town does have a phone even if they don't have a working computer. Or the, the Orca media, although a lot of people use it online, you can turn into, at least some people can turn into one of the educational um, channels and, and watch it on TV. Um, but, and, and that's just it. It's figuring out a consistent way and what information would be appropriate to get out in those different ways. So I've heard a lot of how and what. And I actually heard Corinne say, we know why. I haven't heard you guys verbalize why you want community engagement. Maybe I missed it, but I didn't hear that. Like, why are you doing it? I think each have your own reason, but if you come to a collective why, then you can get to the how and the what. Well, Because I think you'll, you'll bat around a lot of hows and whats without knowing the clear why. Because if you know the why, and this has been said through public access and talks about engaging democracies, if you have that why really clear, then you'll find the, the correct how and what to do that why. But well, when you don't have the clear why, you try a lot of different things. Well, to me, you try a lot of different things because not everybody can get the information in the, in the same manner. But as far as why, it's because this is the community's school. A lot of people see it as the center of the community. Um, a lot of money, in fact, more money than goes into the town budget goes into school budgets. And so to keep people informed and make sure that they're aware of how they can be engaged for, for pieces of it that that they would be interested in, and whether that's coming in to watch a performance, um, whether it be a concert, a play, or whatever, some kind of performance, um, or whether it's that there's um, adult pickup basketball or volleyball going on, or that they need somebody to come in and talk about their Canadian roots, or you know whatever it may be for something that's going on, whether it's Genius Hour or, or whatever's going on, making sure people know about where their tax dollars are going, um, having, having somebody that can explain it to them, and just realizing that even if you don't have kids here, it is a very important piece of the community. I, I'm probably missing several other points, but I mean, it, to me, it's, it's simply the, I don't know, can you say the heartbeat of the community? It really is where so much is going on. In my other school, we did a, uh, we had kind of a 
school board select board partnership to do a monthly newsletter. Well, it wasn't monthly. <laughs> it was like quarter or five times a year, quarterly, I guess. Yeah. We both shared a cost, but it was mostly mm -hmm. school stuff. You know, there were other pieces of town, you know, uh, uh, road report, commissioner report. I mean, there was all kinds of things in there. If there were any senior clubs or whatever, um, that was kind of a shared cost. Who actually and did it, though? Who put it together? We had we had somebody that volunteered. I, I don't know if it was volunteer, but um, she would help. It was one person that helped coordinate all the pieces that she got, and then uh, we did. Was it postal postal patron, which gets to everybody. Um, so the resident at resident, type yeah, of addresses. Kind of I mean, it's really. I don't think this is a new, you know, um, or uh, a challenge that is unique to Berlin. I think how do you get something to all residents? I mean, what are the? I was saying, what are what are the what are the ways? Um, you know, we're kind of getting away from the why a little bit, but you know, what are the ways to to get something to everybody? I mean, still in this day and age, it's it's in their mailbox, you know. Not everybody has internet, not everybody has Facebook or Twitter or, or uh, you know, we, we as a school can't phone and call every person through, a, through an all call. Um, so, you know, what's the, what's the most impactful way to communicate to everybody? It's, it's in their mailbox, you know. Um, so it's those kinds of things I think about too, like how can we go beyond just families. Um, so that's just, I don't know, food for thought there as well. I could find that. Mm -hmm. yeah, I know you would. <laughs> <laughs> I'd send it just in case there's any question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you covered it, covered it well, Corinne. I think when I think about it, I want to engage the public. I want to take advantage, bring any assets from the community into the school, bring any assets from the school back out to the community. Um, it's the whole buy-in piece of having them know what's going on in the school so that the community will hopefully support um, whatever budgets we, we bring forward, assuming they're responsible budgets. It is the center of the community and it is the school that's paid for by Berlin residents, so uh, taxpayers. Anyway. Um, and we want to engage everyone in the success of our children here. So I think that's some of the why for me, it makes, I think, for a successful school is making sure we get the word out, we get the input back in. It's a two-way street. And that's really interesting to think about a community newsletter that might have town, school, uh, fire department, police, library folks, whatever else, historical society, and on and on. Each have a little piece in it, maybe, and share the cost of, of publishing mm -hmm. it. It's really hard to reach those people who are not online. It's not that hard, it's just more expensive and it's time consuming. Well, it, it would really make you sit down and focus if, if it was going to be, for instance, quarterly, just because I can think quarterly in my mind, then that's kind of seasonal. And mm -hmm. I mean, you know the things that are coming up on a regular basis, you know, from year to year but might be new to people that are new in town or, mm -hmm. or maybe new in some other way. I mean, new to the fact that they don't have any kids in school and reminding them of yeah. you know, some stuff going on. Um, so you really have to kind of think that out. I know with the mailings that we did, some of those were kind of last minute, got to get it done, got to get it out because a vote's coming up. And so you, you really need to be more thoughtful as far as what's coming up to try to get it included appropriately in something that's already going out, which is nothing wrong with that, to be planning ahead. And I appreciate the distinction you're asking for here between community engagement and school engagement, because we're all always getting earfuls yeah. about what the school should be doing or what a specific, you know, specific teacher should be doing to, to stay in touch with parents. Um, but that's very different from the community yeah, engagement I would say that we're more responsible for. On the volunteer side, Berlin has probably a, one of the highest percentage of parent volunteerism of any of the schools in Washington Central. And uh, just with a volunteer, volunteer per support person for every classroom. I'm not talking about number of hours, but just the people that are engaged 
and something it can be something as little as an hour or two it, it's yeah. much it's really high um, when I've ever been to community events since maybe only been three or four over the years I've been here great turnout compared to some schools I can think of so um, and all, all of Washington Central parents there a lot a lot a lot of community turnout so um, I, I would say I think you should be commended and our community should be commended for the amount of school participation that there is we always want more and that's always a good thing but we have we have good involvement well as I said I think there has been a lot of good communication and all it isn't just it isn't always consistent in, in getting it out and I think sometimes people kind of slip and think oh well everybody knows about that because we do it every year and I don't just mean the school I mean anywhere in town to them it's something annual but if you're the new person in town or newly don't have a, a kid involved in, in something then if you don't put it on their radar soon enough then it's a shame if they wanted to be involved and couldn't be it's like the spaghetti dinner at the church every fall I only know about it because I see the sign outside. <laughs> it's not because they sent something out. That's funny. Or it's because they have limited ways in which to get it's it out. I think they put the sign out. Yeah. I need to get my tickets. <laughs> Did you have any other thoughts on the why? I think you guys covered every point that I would, I would say ditto to. So thoughts on the how? then and the, keeping in mind the distinction between school communication it's not necessarily going to be out for the whole community sometimes it might um, and community communication which is probably going to land on us well I do go ahead the school newsletter that's being done once a month. I do agree with Corinne. I'd rather see it like, yes, let's celebrate the successes and things that have happened in, in the month, but also have it very directed to what's coming up, you know, whether it's our harvest luncheon and we're looking, you know, we want people to join us for the harvest luncheon, you can buy tickets, you know, be more informative about the things coming up rather than just have it show up on the calendar fronts but actually a little blur about some of the events coming up because a lot of it is this is what we've done yeah. this is I guess old news but along with that have the things that are coming up you know and I guess being mindful of that timing because sometimes the, new, the newsletters come home not on the day that they're printed in the office, but they're held in the classrooms for a while. So something might have happened last week on a Thursday or Friday, but I'm not getting it to the next Friday. Because some teachers are holding it to go home in Friday folders. Uh, briefly last week, and then we talked right before the meeting. I said, what did you think about that? And we haven't had a chance to talk with her. so. Um, I don't want to tell her she has an assignment through a board meeting, <laughs> um, but uh, I do want to talk with, have Aaron talk with her and say, is this something that you can take on and uh, we can reallocate some, some work around here uh, to, do more of, uh, to do more of the organization of the website and just the example that Corinne brought up tonight of the letter. Let's make sure we have the right information up there. I think a very important thing that you said was consistency. If we start using things in a consistent way, then it will draw that following and people will go to the website, for example, if they know they can find the latest information there. And I know that's a hard exactly. thing to do. Yeah. So I, if, you think, fresh. I mean, if you think about it, um, you know, it, I don't know what Chris, I don't know what she had, what her cost is per hour, but if we said r roughly, you know, if you wanted me to do a back of the envelope cost, We're probably talking about thirty-five to four thirty-five hundred to four thousand dollars for the year. Yeah, you know, I just did twenty twenty hours, five hours a week, mm -hmm. thirty-six weeks in the year to get myself into that ballpark. Uh, but I haven't done. I mean, I haven't done an ask Lori to 
Laurie and Sally to put together what a total cost is on that. But that's the type of thing I would think that, you know, it's an hour a day. Once things are set, there's some ramp up time and some training time. I think it's worth it. That's my opinion. I think if we're really going to utilize the website and that's kind of the our goal to place for that. And for me, that's more the administration of the law school. The Amy Young would still do her work that she does to work with the teachers here and support them in their classroom. The, the consistency is just huge. I don't know if you guys had noticed, but the board policies are looking much better on the website. I don't know if you've looked in the last I haven't, few weeks. No, but it was thinking of they, August. They look much better. However, I asked at the policy meeting, I was like, well, are the WCSU policies separate somehow? Because I'm not seeing them there. And that was just kind of an oversight as far as a quick look had been given. Oh, is this stuff on online? Yep, but nobody really went through to make sure all of them were. So, so it's getting there. Um, but it's making sure that consistency of, so all the policies are there for people to be able to look for, not just the Berlin ones. All right. I think I will take some homework again here and write up something about what we discussed here around, and maybe it'll be in the minutes, but um, maybe I'll try to try to draft a document that will um, speak to what we think the purpose of board level community engagement is, because our homework for October is uh, to have the executive committee and board chairs draft a written purpose and strategy for board level community engagement. So we'll talk a little bit about the why and a little bit about some of the options for how that we've talked about today. And we can add to that at the next meeting and have something, hopefully it'll be ready to go to the executive board, um, executive committee the month after. And then all of that is gonna come back to the WCSU boards as a whole to approve hopefully in November. So I'll take that and our next agenda item is the hiring process. Bill, did you want to speak to this? Yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot to write in my notes what the policy was that's in Berlin. Karen, do you remember? We were looking at this the other day. Well, it's, it's under personnel probably, but um. uh, appointment back, it's D1 which you, the, the policy that Berlin has on D1, which is the hiring process, Corinne and I were in the policy committee because this is one of the recommended policies that we're looking at across the, and I'm sorry I didn't put the policy in the packet, but the date on the policy is June 1, 2009. So it's in, it's in that book, yeah. And this policy directs that all hires, the final hiring decision for all positions will be the board for all staff. And as Corinne and I were talking, I saw the light bulb go on for you, Corinne, and tell me if I'm, mis if I'm mischaracterizing it, but that when I said, well, stat this is in conflict with statute. In 2011, Act 153 was passed, which gave the, and which gave the hiring of non-licensed staff the responsibility of the superintendent. It doesn't mean you should, you should be informed of what's going on, but that, and so that puts this policy in conflict with statute. And the way I've been trained is that statute, not always, but usually supersedes policy. Um, so in 2011, uh, there were many changes that happened to, is when curriculum was centralized, when special education became the responsibility of the supervisory union. Uh, many things happened in Act 153. So under Title 16, uh, subsection 242, which is duties of the superintendent, it was select all non-licensed, all non-licensed employees. So we need to update this, and this is something we were talking about at the policy committee. Yeah. Well, so at our last meeting, I believe it was when we um, when I asked as far as that there had been a couple of hires that hadn't come to us and Bill had said um, well according to statute I do the ones that are non-licensed ones and so I went home and kind of perused on that but then when I was getting ready 
and I looked up the statute, and no, I looked at our policy. I said, wait, our policy says both licensed and unlicensed. That's when I wrote an email saying, hey, our policy actually says something different. But then when I was getting ready for the policy meeting and looking at one of the policies before us, the language had it where it's just license that we deal with. And then the, the difference, the, the key there is it was at that meeting that Bill said, oh, well, that was changed in the statute like six years ago. Like, that's the piece that you didn't mention at the meeting, that it happened six years ago. And now I have a clear understanding as far as how it usually happens, why we are looking at the school board association vetted policies is to have, make sure they include things that are current with statute. But Bill also pointed out that besides that, a lot of changes in the laws and the statutes are things that he hears about from, I don't know, other, other whoever, other superintendents. You get updated other. by school, state, by Vermont State School, by the Vermont School Board Association, Vermont Superintendents Association, and through um, AOE um, regulation and memos. I guess the, the only thing that I was still kind of left going, hmm, is that we've had a policy in our books for six years that was in conflict with the state's statute. And so hopefully those are really few and far between because I think you're right. I think you typically defer to state statute, but if you don't know what the state statute is, it's hard to have a policy in front of you saying you're supposed to do something and not realize that uh, that's not really the way it works. So. It's still going to take the policy committee a while to get through the recommended. They've already gone through the required, but there's still a bunch of process in front of us to get everything updated. So the school board association, the Vermont School Board Association, mm -hmm. they update their policies from? Every year, every summer. They work with a joint fiscal office and with AOE legislative staff, joint, not joint fiscal, sorry, joint legislative, you have to help me here, Chris, with the, what's it's actually called, but the legislation, the stat, the legal staff that supports the legislative council, legislative council, AOC, AOE staff attorneys, and the Vermont school board's leg, uh, attorney, uh, they have a, a one person that's legal staff and they sit and work on all these and get the model policies up to date. And they usually tell us somewhere in the fall, like our model policies are up to date now for the past legislative session. Unless there's one that's a really, um, that's getting a lot of attention, it's like hazing, harassment, and bullying. They'll, t they'll jump on that pretty fast. You know, because my mind was still trying to wrap around as far as, okay, like some of those required policies that have already gone, been gone through, so if something happens in the state statute, you know, is there anything in those model policies that says, hey, you know, I've, I've now been updated, you know, you might have passed yours in 2017, but now there's new information from 2018, but I really think it's hearing from our superintendent about changes that he's heard of going forward. But as I say, that's kind of hard to know that, well, for six years, ours didn't really say what it was supposed to. But I still think we should adopt the policies, the model policies. Well, for the most part, that's what we're looking at doing, except for like the community engagement yeah. one. That's really not what a lot of us have been talking about. So it's really hard to say, yeah. let's just go ahead and adopt something that doesn't really look like what we talk about. But I think for the most part, there's, there's been very little changes. So as far as the hiring process itself, we would want to be informed of hires for non-licensed staff. Yes, you should be. You should be. And I, well, I will admit in August, I, this is one of the things I slipped with Aaron, because usually Carol just took care of that for me. And it's one of the things I, Aaron and I hadn't worked out, and I should have had that there for August. We still haven't gotten anything. No. I, what we left at the last meeting was to make sure all five of us knew that we'd get something as far as the office and the food service and there hasn't been anything. Yeah, I, I realize that, Corinne. Okay. 
Oh. Have I you? Like something. Maybe it was just. Hold on. Just move forward. <laughs> <laughs> Before I misspeak, I thought. Well, we all know that one thing about email is that sometimes computers burp. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all experienced that. Oh, that. That was one where I got a lot of questions from people just saying, do we know who's working in the front office? Do we know? Aaron, did you send out an email is? that had the new, the said, please welcome our new staff? So on, that was what I sent Friday, because I got some feedback regarding that. So Friday, it was Friday at 8 a.m. because I set it through the campus. It was uh, open house. It was just a little more about the start of the year and including new folks. Um, so if you saw that, then you got the one from Friday <laughs> about open house. So mm -hmm. Let's see one there was nothing else except maybe I think my back to school letter maybe had that. That's where I saw it. Yeah. That's the back to school letter packet. Okay. I always put new staff in that back school letter. That's current. If anybody comes after that, I'll have to do it in a different way. But I know. Uh, I think it was in the back to school pack, and I don't think I put that in here okay. because I did Good. see the list of. Yeah. Great. All right. We move on. That's all right with everybody here. Mm -hmm. uh, board handbook statement. And I just, I apologize for just emailing that today. Hopefully you were maybe able to find it on the website before then or have seen it at some point. Um, but this this was from a month or two ago. Lori was going through the student handbook and um, asked me about some of the information in it. So I started taking a look at it and there was a, uh, a statement from the board in there that was fairly, I'd never seen, never, once well, I'd never seen it before. I didn't remember seeing it before, and it was fairly outdated. So I started to take a look at it and review it and thought, that's yeah, maybe that's something that ought to come to the board. Um, so I took a stab at redrafting it. That's the email that you saw today. Bruin, I know you had some additional um, suggestions for that, and I know my my redraft is not perfect. Vera, your email address in there I think was incorrect. It was missing a digit. So there are a couple of things that, we, that I know we want to change to that. And I wanted to bring it here uh, for anybody to make additional suggestions for how we word that. Do you happen to have any hard copies of that? I do. Two. One of them's got my scribbles on it, but that's okay. fine. And then I have the document up here, which I'm happy to draft if people want to add anything to it. And so this one that you sent us today, which is what is in my hand now, right? Yes. That is different than what was in the book last year. Yes? Yes. OK. Well, it's still in the book right now, I believe. So you, this is not anything you have drafted or you have? I did draft that. What's in the, and I think maybe Lori held this, off on changing it. Obviously, the principal right. and all that needs to change. Oh, yes. So my draft here has Aaron on it. So maybe I didn't hand you the one that's finished. That might have been what I brought to the last meeting. That's um, what I'm thinking. Yeah, because this still has Carol on it. Yep. So that's probably, so that's, sorry. So that's probably what I brought to the last meeting. I don't have what I've drafted and sent by email. But if you want to make edits on this, I can tell you if I've already, <laughs> already made that edit. Um. Well, it's got iron on it, so that's good. I got that part, yeah. Um, and I think I just don't have it with me. I did read it today. I think you had struck um, about school productions. Yes. Was anything, and would this be the place to add something about farm to school or makerspace or anything like that? I don't know. What do you think? I mean, as a school director's message at the beginning of the handbook. I really love the farm to school presentation that we had and how it's finding its way into the school a variety of ways as far as lunch, snacks, gardening, going out to farms. I think it's become a kind of big piece of what's going on to sc at school. 
Was that in your, your email comments to it me? It was. Okay. I still have those. I could add that. Do you call out one program? Do you, you know, do you do that at the exclusion of others, or do you start getting into a big list? Well, that that was concerned. that was the paragraph where there were several things, including school productions, that I thought needed to be struck because we're not doing school productions, as far as I know. Yeah. So, I don't think what had been in there was all encompassing, but okay. it seemed kind of like a trade-off to me. All right. I can add something about that. Um, and I think this, the school board member terms, I think you had just taken out the how many years, That's and that right. kind of solved that problem. It did, I think, that addressed Why that. Why was there not? Well, like, for, uh, said, I don't have the right things in front said, of me three-year term and then had you to 2021 or something. I think it's a two-year term. Two-year term and had you to 2021. Right, and it's not a two-year term, Barry. You were the two-year term. I was the three-year term. Yeah, I think I got that. And so he just took out the number and left the year that it's doing it, and so that That's resolved that. Um, uh, yeah. I think the rest of it looked good to me. Yeah, I, what you sent. I didn't have any problems with it all. Okay. I had read it more earlier today when I sent you back the email okay. to add in my, I think it was the four that was dropped or something. Um, you had mentioned, Corinne, in your email to me, maybe some sort of update about the facility, talking about the renovation, talking about oh, the roof. Yeah. Might be a nice thing to put in there for this year. Yep. Because I, I, I haven't seen the back to school note that went to parents' house, so I don't know if you included anything about the roof or any other renovation stuff that was done. I have to look back to see if I. I mean, there's there's no point necessarily in repeating stuff if it's already been out there in a place where everybody will see it, but. There is a statement in here that we meet the second Monday of every month at 5.30, except for when we don't, is the other part of it. So, so I'm just trying to think of a good way to say that. I actually meet. had that part up. We meet on Can a we... monthly basis? Can we reword that to say we meet on a monthly basis? Please see the school calendar for dates and times dates, times, and location. And I would put location there because we do move around. I think those are the big things. Great. Um, there, are, there is a spot on the website where our street addresses are still listed. I thought I had heard at one point that, that people did not want their home addresses on the website. It's not like someone couldn't find them if they wanted to, but just not to call them out on the website to have name, email address, and phone number and leave it at that. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, I'm good with name, email. I think that's fine. I don't think it would hurt to maybe say that people could write to us in care of the school. Oh, I wasn't thinking of mailing address. See, that's how we forget people who might not be on email, but they do have phone, hopefully. Or they could write to us. But I'm just thinking, I mean, is, that that's really an option. I mean, school, yeah. yep. all of our. I'd like to think the people in the office know who we are. So if something came in the mail, that it would get passed along to us. Okay, I'll add that. So on the web page, you want it off? 
this yeah it, this I guess they're saying that. the Berlin tab or a school board tab is yeah I mean I don't mind I mean people can Google me and they'll find that but right but I think being consistent is good if some people don't want it then just say get in touch with us through this and Aaron I'll draft school. all this up and send it to you and to Lori to take a look and hopefully it'll be clear what we're asking for And there are a couple of different places on the website where this stuff exists. It's both below and beside, and I've never quite gotten that other than like the below was like part of yeah. the letter initially. I think it, yeah, but I think it ended it, up being duplicated on the side. Yeah, which is, it got either dumped into the handbook or dumped from the handbook to yeah. be the school director's message. One which would, which is kind of takes up more room than it needs to, yeah. but then it's another thing as far as when they're not consistent. Yeah. Is the issue so? Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, I'll take care of that. Was there anything going to happen as far as this value statement? Is it being pulled? Is it? Are we doing something with it? The, va oh, the value statement. I did not. I thought it was okay, but if anyone wants to make any edits to that well but i mean part of the question was do we know for sure where it came from i, don't know. I have no idea i was that thinking that it was part of this family school compact but i'm not positive could be is but part of it was it didn't really say whose it is why it's that's there a, that's also in the handbook ago. yeah it's right opposite i think our director's this came message. from miss gothier a few years ago at open house you might remember this, right in the front entryway, she had a big post-it thing that said, you took little post-its and you wrote down your thoughts, you know, what you value at school, about a vision statement, mission statement, um, and you took your little post-its and you put it up on individual post-its for each separate thing that I just mentioned. And I wouldn't be surprised if what she gathered that night, somehow she worked with maybe some others in the school and came up with this. But so is it? But I want to say it was like Carol's first year here okay. that that was happening. It was, I would say, at least four years ago. But so what are we saying then that whose value statement is this? That it's the school it was, that values this? That it's the community that values this? I'm, if that, I'm still I'm not saying clear. That's a big, I think that's where it came from. And if it is, then it's the, the people who are here at Open House that put their thoughts in there. But again, hmm. I'm not 100% sure that's where that came from, but I, I would. Right. Well, it's in the current I don't, student I don't handbook. Or anything like that. But it doesn't mean it didn't happen. I just. I mean, we could yeah. check in with Cindy and ask her if that's. Well, I think moving forward, it, either we leave it or we strike it, I think is where we're at, correct? Yes. Right. With the, In my mind, if we're leaving it, though, whose who's are we saying it oh, is? Does she remember who, where it came from? Right. Um, We can make it our own, or we can let it go. Do other schools' handbooks have it? Not that I know of. The I'm there's say, a are few. There's a, there? there's a few old missions still s s kind of floating around, but it's slowly as the student learning outcomes and the Washington Central Mission, it's been replaced. I'm gonna say if we don't know where it came from exactly, and to get to the bottom of that, it's gonna take. I said just take it right out. I mean, if we don't know whose statement it is exactly, and I think from year to year, our families change, and to just carry it over from year to year, it could be, I mean, different people have different opinions, I would just take it out. I was just looking to see what then is going to land opposite if nothing else changed. letter and then our thing and then it goes to the family school compact unless that has changed at all yeah I I think it's probably better to not have it than to not really be clear about it I'm fine What's your thought? yeah 
That'll be in the email too, Aaron. Unless we can find a source for it easily, which I'm not sure we can. Okay. Um, agenda item, I don't know what it is, 2.5, an action item, the board order. It's the one that we added at the beginning of the meeting. Mm -hmm. I don't have an action agenda, uh, an action item on my you might have the. <laughs> Krista sent one out before she left a week ago. Oh, okay. Chris and I <laughs> we edited ones. it as we said. What's the <laughs> What's the agenda for the meeting? Okay. Well, we're we'll go with mine at three point one. <laughs> three point one then. So I'll make a motion to approve the board orders in the amount of one hundred sixty-two thousand three hundred forty-five dollars and seventy-two cents. I'm going to read that one more time. I'm sorry. <laughs> one hundred sixty-two thousand three hundred forty-five seventy-two cents. Okay. Thank you. 4.0 for future agenda items. Oh, sorry, is there a second? Yep. <laughs> so moved. Those in favor say aye. 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 4.0 future agenda items. I have a board goals draft, a community engagement draft, and uh, I think we'll need an Act 46 update. Any other future agenda items? Keeping in mind, well, I guess we can put as many on future agenda items as we want. But um, Chris, we're going to be occupied our next, truly heavily occupied our next uh, local board meeting. Well, do you need to, to talk about that? I do not want to say it publicly. Um, to be updated on if we are going to have any extra time in a position for doing the website I'll, I'll get you I'll, I'll be asking you for about that. I'll, I'll get, be asking for um, general fund balance uses of general fund balance okay. to cover that so I made a note for myself okay. that I, next next time we put an approval under action to reserve a certain amount of dollars for website work okay the, the other thing that I was wondering and I didn't think to say it at the beginning of, of the meeting but at the last meeting as far as where we've ended up with um, teachers and classroom assignments. I just wasn't sure how things shook out as far as grade levels and teaching assignments. I know that has changed some beginning of the year, the last few years, so. I have a regular principal's report. Yeah, we can tell you the configuration stayed as they were. Good, just wanted to make sure. Um, that, um, what, was, what was said in June, where there's one kindergarten, we can move into an extra. Three, four is what has happened. We didn't have enough kindergartners come in for two kindergarten sections. But we can show you that the numbers. I mean, I was I was hoping all the principals saying we're not releasing student numbers until we get past the fifth day of school because they change kind of mm -hmm. rapidly those first couple of days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we can give you student numbers mm -hmm. and enrollment update. Good. Anything else? that comes to mind. I think that's something I'll let you. Great. Thank you. We will adjourn at 725.